As soon as Nazi Germany was defeated in early May 1945, British intelligence switched to countering its old pre-war enemy, the Soviet Union and international communism. It was particularly concentrated on trying to rebuild and expand its intelligence networks throughout Eastern Europe. One area of particular interest to MI6 was the Baltic republics of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, occupied by the Soviet Union since 1940. The Germans had then held these countries until overrun by the Red Army, and the Soviet occupation was restored in the last months of World War II. Many of these citizens of these oppressed nations were fiercely nationalistic and anti-communist. They were determined to throw off Red Army occupation. MI6 hoped to aid these movements and gather important intelligence on the Soviets by sending in agents recruited from among Baltic refugees who'd washed up in the British occupation zone of Germany at the end of the war. MI6 believed the best way to insert the agents was by ship through the Baltic Sea. But the Royal Navy was having none of it. The Navy refused to risk its ships and crews on such missions. But MI6 laid enough pressure on the Navy that it came up with an alternative solution. At the end of the war, several powerful and fast German e-boats had surrendered to the British. E-boats, known to the Germans as S or Schnellboats, were very fast motor torpedo boats that had preyed on Allied shipping in the English Channel, North Sea and many other areas in World War II, with sometimes devastating results. The Navy's plan was to reactivate some of these enemy boats, recruit former Kriegsmarine e-boat sailors, and under Royal Navy command, use them to insert MI6 agents in the Soviet-occupied Eastern Baltic states. Fortunately for the Royal Navy, many former Kriegsmarine officers and men were then serving in something called the German Minesweeping Administration, Germany's first post-war naval force that used World War II minesweepers to clear up the detritus of war in the British occupation zone ports and shipping lanes. For more information on this fascinating topic, see my film linked in the description box below. Now, a man was needed to command the e-boat force. Casting around, British naval intelligence interviewed Hans Helmut Kloser, formerly a lieutenant commander in e-boats, winner of the Iron Cross First Class and German Cross in Gold, who had participated in several U-boat battles in the English Channel, the Gulf of Finland and Riga Bay. Kloser accepted and helped recruit former e-boat crews for the former German boat S-208, then at Gosport, Hampshire, England. In April 1949, Kloser set off on the unit's first operation, the insertion of six MI6 agents on the Latvian coast, accompanied in the boat by two Royal Navy officers and two radio operators who were dropped off in Sweden on the way. Three subsequent missions were also successful. To save on wear and tear, S-208 was now based in Germany. In spring 1951, S-208 was upgraded in Bremen, and a sister vessel, S-130, also a former World War II e-boat, added to the unit the following year. Over the next four years, Kloser and his crews, under the codename Operation Jungle, carried out about 15 more spy insertion operations, dropping off or collecting around 50 agents in the Baltic States and Poland for both MI6 and the Galen Organization, a West German intelligence organization headed by Hitler's former spymaster Reinhard Galen working for the Americans. The cover name for the vessels was the Baltic Fishery Protection Service, and S-208 and 130 were replaced by three more modern e-boats in 1952. The Royal Navy and its former enemies worked well together, and a mutual respect grew between them. The e-boats and crews were eventually transferred to the new West German Navy, the Bundesmarine, in 1956, and Kloser commanded its first torpedo boat squadron. S-130 survives today as the last World War II German e-boat, so please watch the film I made about the boat linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.